So in a continuation, building off of last month's video on paying the least amount of income taxes over your lifetime, not just your accumulation years and not just your distribution years, but over your whole lifetime. Today we're going to talk about what happens in retirement when you go to take out the money that you've built up. And what's the point of building it up if you can't take it out and use it and enjoy it? We're going to also discuss how different types of investment vehicles are taxed in retirement because each type of asset grouping may have a different tax property in retirement. I have found that this is a very good simplistic way of explaining it over the years and hopefully you'll find this very helpful to you. So without further ado, let's go to three pools of money. So when you get to retirement, it's very likely you're going to have these three different pools of assets. Qualified assets, which would represent your 401k, profit sharing, defined benefit plans, IRAs, these are all assets that you put money away pre-tax and never pay tax on. Non-qualified portfolio assets could be CDs, could be mutual funds, could be stocks, uh, could even be real estate and assets of that type that there's some long-term capital gains treatment, some ordinary income, depending on how long you've held them, when you sold them, etc. And then the last pool is life insurance, cash values, municipal bonds, and Roth IRAs. So we're going to assume for this example that you had a million dollars in each of these three pools. You had a million dollars in retirement assets, you had a million dollars in non-qualified portfolio assets, and you had a million dollars in either life insurance cash value, municipal bonds, or Roth IRAs. So if you went to take the million dollars out of your retirement plan, the government's going to stop you and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, we want out 40%. Now I should tell you at this point, this explanation is meant to have an overview for educational purposes. So it's really a broad base to give you some, some basic knowledge and fundamentals that can help you. So depending on your federal and state and local brackets, we're going to use an average of 40%, which is not the highest bracket, not the lowest bracket. So if you went to take your million dollars out, the government would immediately stop you and say, where's my money? They want 40% of this. So $400,000 would be gone. Okay, and I think most of you probably know that. If not, I'm sorry to be someone to tell you that, but that's how it works. If I let this money double while spending other money in retirement, the good news is the million became two million, but the bad news is I also added another 400,000 of tax. So I doubled my money and I doubled my tax. If I use portfolio two and I let portfolio two double, I might have paid somewhere around 32% uh, combined long-term capital gains, short-term, ordinary income, and this is going to change every year for each person. So this is very general. Um, but you might have added 320000 of tax. So if I only had these two pools of money to draw on in retirement, by looking at it this way, I would be better off spending my pension, 401k money first, let the non-qualified assets double because I'm paying less tax. In this example, I might have saved myself $80,000 in taxes. Um, so that's very important to know, notice these differences. If I had pool number three, and I had life insurance cash value, Roth IRA, or municipal bond interest, if I doubled that value, I doubled my tax, but those are all tax-free from an income perspective, so I added no additional tax. So if you got to retirement and had these three pools of money, you have the option of where to take from when. So if you're understanding this and you have these three pools of money with respective taxes, it looks to me like what I would want to do is I would want to spend these assets last. I want the biggest compounding curve on the investments that are taxed the least. Then I would spend this second and I would spend this first. Um, now, we live in a society and a world economically that not everything stays the same ever. So this is today and this is based on what we know today. Tomorrow, honestly, it could be different. And then if I did this, I would want to start this first because, again, I want to create the biggest compounding curve on the investments that are taxed the least. I would start this second and I would start this last. What's going on here is the balance 
really between deductions today and tax-free income later. And it's a very tough balance. And what I've found in my 30 years of experience is that no one's really building their pools with any kind of balance. And so the, the objective of this lesson is to try to pay attention to how you're building your assets and what is your balance and do you have a balance? Because if you don't have a balance, you could really get caught off guard later. We all know as consumers, if we had three credit cards and we owe 10000 on each and we had a, a zero interest credit card from a promotional bank or, or store, we had a 13.9% rate and we had a 21% rate and someone handed us $10,000, we know I'm paying off the highest interest credit card first because that's common sense. One more thought on this is as we keep focusing on taxes, this is something that's interesting but a little scary so I should give you a warning or a disclaimer, this may upset you. Um, this is the history of the top marginal tax rate in this country from 1913 till now. And 1913 was the beginning of the end, that's when it started and we have it up, up through currently. And if you look, the average of this is around 60%. We were at a 35% high and now we're at 39.6. So when you look at this, what scares me is that when many of us go to retire, tax rates could be higher. We're, I think, unfortunately moving in a higher taxed society. And how are you prepared for that? You know, when it comes back to what I just went over, the three pools of money, I want to be in position to pay less taxes later, not more. And the way this looks like, I'm going to pay more. So I can't overemphasize, to me, the importance of having tax-free income in retirement when tax brackets could be 50, 60 percent. And as I mentioned in one of my many earlier videos, is that the concept of being in a low tax bracket in retirement doesn't exist for a lot of us because I think tax rates are moving higher. So we really want to try to prepare for what if this becomes the situation. As someone very wise once said, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, we want to make sure that our clients have a balance in those pools and definitely have a good source of tax-free income in retirement. So take a look at what you're doing, take a look at your balance, take a look at your three pools, and see what kind of balance you really have. I hope this has been really helpful. I look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you very much.